All right, we're back here at Mummert Wide Block, and uh, some of you guys wanted to see a port mold get made, so I'm gonna go kind of quick here because I'm stirring this stuff up. So you mix this silicone 50-50, and if you have some idea of the volume of your port, it helps you mix it up uh, in an amount that isn't wasteful or that comes up short. You don't want to come up short. Um, it's always better to make a little more. So. There's really only a couple secrets here is you got to have the valve in the head, got to have the head semi-level, the intake flange, and uh, you have to put a mold release agent in there like uh, Pam. We use Pam for that rich buttery taste and smell. Um, and then after you do, you get the port kind of cleaned out, leveled up, you have your mold release agent in it. Then you mix this stuff 50-50 and you pour. Uh, the last real secret to making these molds will be when it comes out. We'll go into that. But I'm going to pour this right here so that you can see it in live. Hopefully we don't make too much of a mess here. So here we go. Don't want to... Uh, Ruin this on camera. So we pour it in there. And then, uh, yeah, pour slow when you get to the end. You'll know how good a leveling job you did. Let it settle out. I like to try, you know, if anything, you're better off to leave it slightly down. I don't really like having the flash hang out too much past the end. Um, and then as far as your mixing container goes, don't worry about the cleanup because it just peels right out of the mixing container when you're done. So uh, from there, let's go and talk about some math stuff. So we gotta let that set up, 25 minutes, we're running. I'm not gonna talk for 25 minutes, I hope, but let's see, let's see, let's get back here. So, porting math for beginners. Here's some generic ideas. Uh, hot street engines. So, uh, the hot street thing, for me, if you're porting ahead, you're trying to build something with performance, uh, usually, and uh, so, the old rule of thumb is, is a four CFM gain in one cylinder is what it takes to make roughly a horsepower increase. So um, this changes as you have different amounts of cylinders. So in a one cylinder engine, four CFM equals one, okay? In a four cylinder engine, a one CFM gain in four cylinders is one horsepower. That's how you're getting your four. So in a six cylinder engine, one CFM gain is roughly one and a half horsepower. And then we move on to eight, uh, eight cylinders, one CFM gain and eight ports will get you two horsepower. So to kind of clarify that for you, if you have 200 CFM cylinder head in one cylinder, it's about 50 horsepower uh four cylinders is 200 it's a one for one exchange and six cylinders one and a half times so 300 horsepower and if you have eight cylinders uh it's two to one so obviously if you had 12 it would be three to one so my disclaimer for this um and we're just going to roll through the air compressor i turned it on um my disclaimer is the efficiency of the engine matters and it alters this math, okay? So to me, a hot street engine, and this is gonna be completely variable, this is gonna be different for everybody, is gonna be at least 10 and a half to one compression or something, you know, you know, over 10 to one. Um, and if you see our carburetor selection video, no more than one inch of manifold vacuum at your peak RPM, peak horsepower, okay? It, that's hot street, so your carburetor sizing will be uh, based on that. 
It's got to have a good designed header. And for a small block, uh, the cam is going to probably be somewhere in the 230 to 240 at 50. These are kind of my ideas of a, a hot street engine. It's definitely streetable. It's going to have a little bit of a choppy idle, but it's not a drag car. It has enough of everything to be semi-efficient. Okay. Um, and then the efficiency of the head matters. So all cylinder heads aren't created equal, right? Uh, some heads have better combustion chambers, better spark plug placements. You know, they just have uh, maybe better port elevation. So, you know, this number is, I'm just trying to get you sort of centered here. There's stuff that, um, you know, really pure street engines, low compression, small cam, they will not be able to achieve this number. And then obviously as the engine gets built, more compression, better cam, you know, you don't need that much CFM to make one horsepower. But this is like, a, a, I would say a centered number. And it's probably where most, a lot of people fall. If you're, you know, if you're looking at porting heads, you're, you're trying to build something decent. Okay. So now we're going to move down to understanding that valve area per cubic inch, certain styles of engines usually have a certain format. Okay. Um, so what am I mean? What I'm trying to say is that one thing I want you to understand is that all engines, like um, when it comes to talking camshafts or other, um, if you're dealing with a four valve engine, it's going to have significantly more valve area per cubic inch than a mild two valve street head. Okay. And that's going to have a pretty big role on the duration of the cam. So your valve area per cubic inch plays a big role on camshaft duration. And so I like to kind of break it down for people. Most people don't look at this, but I look at it a lot. So as an example, as good, most of your small blocks will have about 12 to 14 and a half cubic inches in one cylinder for every square inch of valve. Okay. Most of your big blocks, We'll have say 13.5 to 17 cubic inches for every square inch of valve. And then if you start talking four valve engines, they'll be somewhere around the 7 to 11. Okay, so right away, you look at big block, one end of the spectrum and four valve, you can have four valve engines that have double the valve area of a big block okay I mean and the duration certainly reflects it um, say a lot of big blocks might need a high 270 at 50 cam to get into the uh, 7500 rpm range because they're just so down on valve area okay there are plenty of four valve engines running out there today that can run above 8,000 RPM with high 220 at 50 camshafts. Okay, so the amount of valve area per cubic inch that the engine has, it, 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 it's, it affects the port shape greatly because you still have to keep in uh, to consideration that minimum area we talked about the other day. Um, but it just affects the duration radically. So I'm going to move down here. We're going to get right down on the ground with this thing. Stay with me here. So let's see. Valve diameter plays a big role, mainly in your valve lift. Your valve diameter um, has a big effect on valve lift, and a lot of it's got to do with the lift to diameter ratio. So I put a little example on the board, and I tried to go from one extreme to the other. So you'll kind of understand, but a one inch diameter valve, okay, it has a square area of 0.7854. So a one inch diameter valve doesn't even have a square inch of area. But if you look at the circumference of a one inch diameter valve, because that's simple, it's pi, right? So a one inch diameter valve the circumference is a th over 300% greater than the diameter and it's damn near 400% greater than the area, 
right? So let's go to an extreme and let's look at a four inch diameter valve. Okay, a four inch diameter valve, the area and the circumference will be the same. Okay, a four inch diameter valve will have 12.566 square inches of area and it'll have a 12.566 inch circumference. And so you kind of understand, and this, this moves down into the next, um, but that's one of the main reasons, you know, that the valve diameter plays a big uh, part of lift is because um, as the valve gets bigger, uh, the circumference does not grow as fast as the area. So we're gonna move down to our quarter lift to diameter ratio. Okay, and it, if you take your valve and you were to uh, multiply that by four or, or times it, sorry, multiply it by 0.25 or divide it by four, same thing. Um, at that point, when the lift reaches a quarter of the diameter, the curtain area or the window between the valve seat and the head and the valve seat and the valve equals the valve area. Okay, so smaller valves have a greater circumference ratio area to circumference ratio so on a one inch valve at a quarter lift to ld ratio that's only 250 lift okay so on a four inch valve you got to be at one inch of valve lift to um you know reach that uh, curtain area versus valve area equalization point and so uh, what I'm trying to get to with some of this explanation and reasoning, because engines are a part of many components. They don't, engines don't see themselves as, you know, a bunch of receipts in a bag. It's everything you put together, you know, makes what it is. But um, if you have a, two engines, let's say, let's say you have a, a small big block like a 427, and you have a, you know, a, a, a decent sized small block with a, 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 you know, not a very big valve in it. And you start doing some valve area per cubic inch correlations. And you say, hey, you know, these two engines just happen to have a very similar, you know, they happen to be, because you can see that these areas kind of do intermingle. And, you know, um, the point of that was, is that the durations would be similar in the two engines to get them to run at the same uh, similar RPM because the valve area per cubic inch is similar. But because the valve head diameter is different, the lifts would probably be significantly different. So that's something that you want to wrap your head around is um, two engines you know, let's say to get the 6,500 could have us in a certain instance, have a similar duration, but may need, um, a fairly different lift and just due to the different valve diameters. So the other day, my forgotten rule from video two was as you perform your, uh, modifications to each port, um, I really like it when people work on their heads and steps, don't take one port too far because it, you, it gets hard sometimes to remember everything you did. As you uh, work, especially if you're working on a technical area, like say you have a certain turn or a certain uh, corner in a push rod and you're wanting to really work on that area, you've got your measuring devices out. You know, once you're in that head space, stay in that head space and do those mods on uh, each one of the cylinders. And that way your progress is coming along on all of your ports, okay? And uh, you know, some of the areas in these ports can be kind of tricky and just uh, what tools you're using, what bits you're using and uh, how you're holding the head affects how you shape it. So, you know, once you get get all dialed into doing that perform that modification on every port so um 
I actually got to sign off right now because it's going to take a little while for this uh, silicone to go off. But once it does, we'll come back and we'll get it out and we'll check it out. So uh, I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so about 34, 35 minutes have gone by. So I pulled the spring off here. You can just touch it. It's solid. So first thing we got to do is slide the valve out and uh, remember, oh boy, put mold release on your valve too, because if you don't, it'll try to stick to that thing. So one of the secrets here is ports can be shaped wildly different. And like this head here had that really big guide boss in it. And I think the first time we pushed a mold out, we went this way. But since the guide boss now has been getting shaped a little better, we're pushing this way. So let's see what we get here. And there it is. Right there. So that last rule, and I can't, I'm not going to take you into the bathroom and wash this off in the sink. But see how uh, it's very, very shiny and very sticky. Um... What we do with these, once they come out like this, is we go ahead and we wash them in the sink with the soap, and then we baby powder them. Okay, that's probably one of the last little tricks, is to baby powder the mold, because if not, it'll just always seem to have this really sticky sheen on them, and they just want to get really dirty and filthy. But uh, it, once you baby powder them, like uh, any one of these molds, like this... This is a mold off of a, I don't know, you can kind of see the white hue on it. This came out of a, we built a Raptor 700, the M-Rap. So that's a pretty cool look at it. This head, this head will get it done. Definitely 500 CFM capable on that one. But, see right now, very bright, very shiny, very sticky looking. This really wants to get dirty. This one really wants to be dropped on the ground. No, don't do that. Once you go wash it off and you powder it, it uh, will be much more manageable around the shop. So I got to wipe my hands off here. Thanks so much. But anyway, guys, um, that's going to wrap it up for this video. And uh, hit like, subscribe. The next video is going to be about shapes. We're going to have to eventually get down here to trying to wrap this up a little bit because you guys have to go do it. You're, I mean, I can give you some ideas and show you some stuff, but you're going to have to get down and get dirty and just do some of this and see where you land. But uh, shapes is probably going to be one of the last things we talk about. And of course, I'm sure you guys are going to read all kinds of books. And um, when we get to the shapes video, that's when we're going to bring out the Y block dimensions and we're going to look at those because the Y blocks definitely are a shape game uh, the corners in those ports are really bad and uh, how you shape them really affects how they move air so we're going to get the Y block dimensions paper out fortunately I got to go to my daughter's football game and uh, it is Sunday in here so uh, hit like hit subscribe and uh, when we put something together on uh, shapes and how to expanding radiuses. I'm going to leave you with that. Think about expanding radiuses. Because uh, back cuts, short turns, push rod shapes. A lot of your shapes will be based on that theory. So we'll go over that. All right, guys. See it.